Today in the news, we have some insane TDPs, new power connectors, and Zen 4. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's jump right into it. As you might already know, future releases of power supplies are going to use a different standard called ATX 3.0. With this new standard, a new connector for GPUs is going to show up. It's a brand new 16 pin power connector that can deliver up to 600 watts with one bundle of cables. And now the first GPU to use it has been leaked. This is MSI's RTX 3090 Ti Supreme X. As you can see, it's a chunk. And right up top, we have the brand new female end of the power connector. Now, the TDP of this card is 480 watts. That's 130 more than the uh, RTX 3090. This just goes to show that the rumors about next generation GPUs having 500 plus watts TDPs is definitely plausible. Speaking of which, Igor's lab got some juicy information this week about next gen NVIDIA GPUs. First, the top of the line Ada Lovelace chips, that's AD102, would apparently be pin compatible with Ampere boards, specifically GA102. What this means is that the timeline for manufacturing will be greatly shortened. Basically, manufacturers can tweak the design for cooling and such on current boards, and then just plop on the new RTX 4000 chip on them instead of waiting for the chips from NVIDIA and then doing the validating and tweaking. This compatibility also means that the new top of the line GPU would have a maximum of 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the same as the current generation. Igor also confirmed that this new AD102 GPU would have a TDP of 600 watts. As insane as it sounds, I'm not surprised. Ever since the GTX 900 series, every generation after has been consuming more and more power. At 600 watts, only one cable would be needed, and that's the new 16-pin power connector. Oh, and you don't have a power supply with that new connector? Well, don't worry. You can probably get an adapter like this one that got leaked this week. Except for 600 watts, you're gonna need one that takes four of these eight-pin connectors. That's gonna look like a mess in any cases. Moving on, let's talk AMD. Leaker extraordinaire Greymon55 is back at it again with some juicy leaks. According to his sources, the next generation of Ryzen CPUs based on Zen 4 would still stick to a maximum of 16 cores. Not only that, but the TDP of the CPU is a lot higher than Zen 3. The 16 core chip would go all the way up to 170 watts, while the 12 core part would be 105 watts. Now, if we compare this to the current generation, all of the high-end chips from the 5800X and up have a TDP of 105 watts. Now, obviously, that's the baseline. AMD's current 105 watt CPUs typically consume around 140 watts under load. That's because their package power tracking is set to 142 watts. If we take this and extrapolate from 170 watts, then a 16 core Ryzen 7000 CPU could consume up to 230 watts, but that's just, you know, napkin math. If Zen 4 behaves similarly to Zen 3 when it comes to cooling, you're gonna need quite the cooler to get the optimal performance out of your chip. I mean, a 5900X right now still gets performance improvements when you go from a 240 AIO to a 360 one. LTT tested that a while ago. It was a pretty good video. Oh, and uh, something else about Zen 4 that I'm pretty excited about. When it was announced, AMD said that the new platform would support the latest technologies, I'm talking about AM5. So new technologies like PCIe Gen 5 and DDR5, but they never said that they would abandon older technologies. Take for example, the 500 series of motherboards. They were the first to introduce PCIe Gen 4, but not all of them did. X570 was all PCIe Gen 4. B550 only had the first slot and one M.2 slot at PCIe Gen 4, and A520 just doesn't have PCIe Gen 4 support at all. So maybe we'll see something similar with AM5, but with memory. 
That's because according to Greymon55, in the I.O. die, the memory controller of Zen 4 apparently still supports both DDR4 and the newer DDR5. Now, we don't know if AMD will actually support both at some point post-launch, but I wouldn't be surprised if a B650 or A620 board popped up with DDR4 support. Plus, Intel will also support DDR4 for their 13th gen of uh, Raptor Lake CPUs, so DDR4 is not out of the window just yet. So what do you guys think about this? I know that if AMD went DDR5 only, then supply and demand would reduce the price over time, but DDR4 is very strong right now. Plus, why buy DDR5 memory if your kit of DDR4 is already really good? I mean, I wouldn't mind saving a little bit of money on my next build at the end of this year. So what do you guys think? Should AMD open up to DDR4 or stick to DDR5? Let me know what you think down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, it's, it's, uh, everything is healing very well. Thank you for asking all the people in the comments who are apparently teeth expert. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Chomp. Chomp. Chomp.